house of Jacob, let us walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light, walk in the light of Yahweh. Again, come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in exciting to be part of a darling of a day yeah. it's exciting how many of you have seen the blooms blooming on the trees yes. isn't that great it just kind of reminds us that spring it's on its way it's just the sun's got to catch up at some point in all this program right somebody well, I was talking to somebody down in California bragging how it was 77 degrees the sun was shining and everything was wonderful I said that's fine at least we can breathe here <laughs> yeah so anyway so I'm so glad you could come this morning We've missed you. I hope everything's been going well this week. Has everything been going well this week? Have you had a great time? How many of you had a little bit of a challenge, and you know that the Heavenly Father answered your challenge, you became victorious? How many of you had that? Yeah, yeah, a lot of us have. Because it's been an interesting week for myself also. You know those ideas of if everything is going to happen, it all happens at once? <laughs> I've had two weeks in a row of that. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> ah, ah. So you got to really get your heart and soul into this and be so, so thankful to Heavenly Father. Here's our prayers. And when we call on him, we know that we have this magnificent ear and spirit. Listen to our request. It's an amazing thing. Let's all stand and sing the Shema. Amen. It's great. Yeah. I, I, hear the, I hear the creaking as everybody stands up. We'll see if we can get the creak out. Okay. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Blessed is the name of his esteemed kingdom for all eternity. Amen. So while you're standing, hug somebody and tell them you're so glad to see them and introduce yourself to somebody you haven't seen before.
Let's have some of the gentlemen come forward. We'll hold it to lead so we can bless the children. We need some pillars to hold it to lead so we can bless the children. against the enemy, hallelujah. To extend your hand, let's bless them together. Let's give Yahweh a hand for our children. As Dale said, thank you everyone for being here on this set-apart day, a place for set-apart people to gather. Amen? Well, if you have any trouble at all, if you have any struggle at all, if you have any pain, we have a song that will give you a something to meditate on that will bring you cheer. Amen? Amen. Amen. One day soon a great moment will come, Abba's appointed time.
Mashiach, Mashiach, oh, I'm waiting for you. Mashiach, Mashiach, I'm looking to the sky. Mashiach, Mashiach, oh, I'm waiting for you. Mashiach, Mashiach, I'm looking to the sky. When I stand before him face to face, I have nothing to fear. Mashiach, oh, I'm waiting for you. Mashiach, Mashiach, I'm looking to the sky. Until then we follow, living like he lived. Loving Abba's Torah, walking in his word. Mashiach, oh, I'm waiting for you. Mashiach, Mashiach, I'm looking to the sky. Mashiach, Mashiach, oh, I'm waiting for you. Mashiach, Mashiach, I'm looking to the sky. When he comes, he'll take us to the land, the tribes of Israel restored. Abba will write his Torah on our hearts. Mashiach, oh, I'm waiting for you. Mashiach, Mashiach, I'm looking to the sky. Mashiach, Mashiach, oh, I'm waiting for you. Mashiach, Mashiach, I'm looking to the sky. Mashiach, Mashiach, oh, I'm waiting for you. Mashiach, Mashiach, I'm looking to the sky. Mashiach, Mashiach, oh, I'm waiting for you. Mashiach, Mashiach, I'm looking to the sky. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we were watching a news show from Israel the other day, and they were showing the Jerusalem Marathon. And they happened out of all of the thousands of participants, they happened to interview a gentleman who had a, a, the word Mashiach on his uh, uh, T-shirt. And he said that he was praying that Mashiach would come before he reached the end of the race. And I have heard other stories like that, and there are actually songs that are very similar to the one that we sang, that Jews around the world sing. They don't believe that Yeshua is the Mashiach, but they're praying for his coming. Anyway, and one day soon, he'll reveal himself. Amen? But we know who he is. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the immense grace. Oh, Father. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Shoot. 
It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Is that your prayer today? Oh, Father, may it ever be, Father, may it ever be we would be striving to honor you in all that we do and say and that which we think. Amen. Amen. Oh. 
set apart. Kadosh, 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 Father, that's the cry of our hearts, is that you make us holy unto you. Father, it, it, this encompasses so much with you because it, it, it involves our abiding in you. Father, when we're in you, then you make us holy. You, you make us the, 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 the people that you've, you've called for, for a purpose, for your purpose. Father, I thank you so much for all that you do for Cause us to, to, to get a greater sense of what you're doing in our lives and in the, the congregational life. I thank you so much for this. In the name of Yeshua. We're at the part of, of our service where we get to minister to one another. And you know what? Did ministry to one another involves prayer. Sometimes it involves building up, the lifting up of each other. Sometimes it involves a kind word. But I ask that uh, as, we, as we come together, that we break into our groups. If there's anybody here that, uh, that's new, grab them. Bring them into your group. Let's go ahead and bring in the group. I'll have the elders come forward, please. <laughs>
Turn with me in your Bibles today to, to Romans chapter 6. Romans chap, chapter 6. We're going to be looking at the first 14 verses. This is actually a very um, exciting passage for me. And uh, having, and I, I've told you before, having come from a diverse uh, denominational background, um, it, it's been kind of interesting as, as we've looked at, at, so, at this passage over different points of view and so forth. Um, so it's going to be kind of, it's fun for me to be able to look at this. Um, and I'm going to talk about initially I'm going to give you a really good definition of this passage um, as, as defined by, by Sunday school, um, as, as defined by how I grew up knowing about it, and so forth. But then we're going to take a look at some depth. And uh, that's kind of where I want to go because uh, we're going to see some things here that we perhaps we didn't uh, see before. And it's hopefully going to cause us to do a kind of a, a paradigm shift in our thinking. How many of you like that? When you go, when you thought you had it down, and all of a sudden, you know, I, I remember when I went from the rapture theology to where I am now, I was in the midst of writing uh, my, my, my thesis, my doctoral thesis, and I was back in my room just typing away. My wife was in the house somewhere trying to stay quiet so I could study. I'm right, on the, right up to the edge of my doctoral study, and man, I'm going to do it. And it's a 200-page dissertation. And I was doing it on the theology of the book of Revelation. And I came to this position, I came to this place where I was looking at this rapture. And all of a sudden, as I began to, to, uh, to take a look at the words, the different Greek words that were used there uh, for what we, they had all talked about this theology... Okay, I realized that we weren't going to be raptured, and I go, I yelled out, oh, no, that was my favorite part, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and, and now I have to look at it a whole different way of looking at things, and, um, it, and, and actually it caused me to even progress further as I began to open up the, the scriptures more and more and more, um, and I also came to the realization that this is, not, this is my doctoral thesis, and it's a, it's a, a Sunday um, believing theo- or, uh, seminary that, that, was, that I was going through, and I realized that I may not make it. <laughs> okay. I may not pass if I write this stuff, right? So I wrote it anyway, and I got an A on it. So I was really co- it was really cool. Yahweh protected me so, and, uh, and so forth, but... This, is, this, this passage is, is kind of the same thing, if you will. We've had a, we've had a definition of it for quite some time. And, and the definition uh, you, you, you've heard most often is that this, we, this is our identification with the, with the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua. Baptism. Okay? Baptism is, is our identification with the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua. Now, th- that's, that's not a bad definition. I'm not saying that's bad. But there's so much more to that that it's unbelievable, okay, when we take a look at it. And it, it, it actually, this 14 verses will be in your face when you take a look at this, okay? So let me read. It says, what should we say then? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Messiah Yeshua were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death in order that as Messiah was raised from the dead by the, the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a new way of life. For if we have been joined with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. 
For we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that sin's dominion over the body may be abolished so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. Since a person who has died is freed from sin's claims, now, if, if we died with Messiah, we believe that we also live with, with him. Because we know that Messiah, having been raised from the dead, will, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For in light of the fact that he died, he died to, uh, he died to sin once for all. But the light of the fact that he lives, he lives to, to Elohim. So, you too consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to Elohim in Messiah Yeshua. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your, in your mortal body, so that, you, so that you obey its desires. And do not offer any parts of it in sin as weapons of righteousness. But as those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to Elohim and all the parts of yourselves to, to Elohim to weapons for, for righteousness. For sin will not rule over you because you are not under law but under grace. Father, I just thank you so much for uh, this passage. I just ask that as we go through today that you begin to open the eyes of our hearts and to see exactly what you've done for us. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Okay, so we talked about this being uh, identifying with the death, burial, resurrection of Messiah. But I would like to look at this, like I said, a little bit deeper. Now remember, we're talking, we're still in the, in the, the, the discussion, if you will, that when one man, one man sinned, it, it was imputed to all of us, right? Okay, now he's talking about the second Adam here, where when one man is lives, we all live, right? Okay, so that we can kind of get that understanding. It's a reference to Adam. The, the man's sin, death, enter into the, all of us. And of course, we begin to die from the time we're born. But the question here is placed before us, could, could we continue in sin? Now, that's kind of interesting. This question actually comes from, from Romans chapter 5, verse 20. If, if you go there, chapter 5, verse 20. And it says, uh, it says, the law came, came along to multiply the trespass. But where, where sin multiplied, grace, grace multiplied e even more, so that just as, as sin reigned in death, so also grace will reign through the righteousness, resulting in eternal life through Yeshua Messiah, our Master. Paul argues against the, uh, this idea that, that, um, that we should continue in sin because then grace would somehow be multiplied. You know, it would, it would glorify Yahweh if we just continue in sin. And he, he, Paul's coming at it and says, that's absurd to think that way. That's absurd to, to, to grab that, that kind of knowledge thinking that somehow sin is going to glorify Yahweh. Let me ask you, let, just, just let me think, think this out for a bit. We broke down the word kresma, the gift, and we realized that the grace was actually the first part of that word, caress. And we tied that, we were able to tie that back to the Ruach, back to the Holy Spirit. If somehow his grace, the Holy Spirit, is working in our life, how could it be that we, could, we, we should continue in sin? Can the Ruach be with us when we're in sin? That's called grieving him, his, the Spirit, right? And we, we discussed that. And so that's Paul's assertion here is, hey, this is, this is not going to work because we can't, absolutely we cannot uh, continue in sin. Now, now, this is where the, the conversation kind of takes this unexpected, uh, going into a little bit deeper understanding of this passage. Now, look at, at, at uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 2. Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Did you catch that? 
somewhere along the line, there was a death that took place. And apparently, the death that took place was not only Yeshua Messiah, but it was us. Did you catch that? Listen to this. Absolutely not. How can we, who's, who is he talking about? We? We, all of us? We? Those that believe? How can we, who died to sin, still live in it? And you know what? That's not the only place. Let's turn to you, Ephesians chapter 2. Take a look at verses one through five. And it says, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler who exercises authority over lower heavens, the spirit now working in the disobedient. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts, and we were by nature children under wrath, as others were also. But, Yah- but Yahweh, who is rich in mercy because of his, his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Messiah Yeshua. Though we were dead in trespasses, you are saved by grace. Okay? There it is again. Once you were dead, Past tense. Past tense. Now, to, for me, we have to take a hard look at this because these, these words are important that he's using. Right? Now, the problem is, the, our problem is that we have, we have a little bit of difficulty uh, making the leap from our sins to dead to alive. Right? Look at Galatians chapter 2. Verses 10 through 20. They ask only that they ask only that, that we, we would remember to the poor, which I made every effort to do. Um, yeah, I'm right. But when, when Cyphus came to, um, to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For he, he regularly ate with, with Gentiles uh, before they were... Let's see where I was going with this. Oh, Okay. Because he feared, uh, he feared from the, the circumcision party. Then the, the rest of the Jews joined his hypocrisy. So that even Barnabas uh, was carried away by, his, by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that, that they were deviating from the truth of the gospel, I told uh, Cephas that in front of everyone, if you who are a Jew live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you count, compel Gentiles to live like Jews? We who, who are Jews by birth do, uh, and not Gentiles, sinners, know that no, no one is justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Yeshua Messiah. And we have believed in Messiah, in Messiah Yeshua so that we might be uh, justified by faith in Messiah and not by works of, of the law. Because by the, by the works of the law, no human being will be justified. But if we, if we ourselves are also found to be sinners while, while seeking to be justified by Messiah, is Messiah, Messiah then a, a promoter of sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild the system, I tore it down. I show myself to be a lawbreaker. For though the, the law, for through the law, I have died to, to, the, to the law so that I might live for, for Yahweh. I have been crucified with Messiah 
And I no longer live, but Messiah lives in me. The whole life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son, in the son of, of Elohim, who loved me and gave, me, gave himself for me. Now, Paul is talking about a law. What do you think that law that he's talking about is? Do you think that we need to throw away Torah? But there's a law of sin and death. That's the law he's talking about. And he's talking about salvation. He's talking, I cannot be saved by just trying to do the law. He said, that, that won't get me to where I need to go. He said, so there, there's this, what's at work in us is the law of sin and death. And that's the law that he came to fulfill so that we no longer have to die for our sins. Do you get that? Everybody's looking at me like, what do you say? Let's go to Genesis. You know, when it comes to the gospel, he certainly has given us a big book to, to work with, right? Let's look at, 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 at Genesis chapter 2, verses uh, 16 and 17. It says, and, 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 uh, and Yahweh Elohim commanded man, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil, for in that day you eat from it, you will certainly die, and it certainly is die, die, showing a process. Okay? There's the law of sin and death. Do you get that? You see, even when I, <laughs> Steve talked about when he was a cop, okay? So I, I, that opened it up that so I could talk when I was a cop. You know, there's laws on the books, and those laws are broken into elements of the law, okay? For, for someone to have broken a law, it has to, they have to have fulfilled these specific elements of the law, Okay? And so we're not just looking at the surface and saying, well, you did this, and so I'm going to arrest you for that. I have to have these elements in place before I can arrest them for that law. Is that not right? Sometimes it was so complicated that I had to call the county attorney and say, is this what I have? Okay? The law, the Torah has the same thing. The law has, a number, has, has many elements to it that, that we have to, to be careful about. And so as we go through this, he's spelling it out for us. Genesis, by the way, is part of Torah. And he says, he says this, okay? To, for you to fall under the law of sin of death, you, or not, you shouldn't eat of that tree right? If you do eat of that tree, you fulfill the, the, the element within that law to receive death. You see, much of what we teach today in, in Torah does not, does not give us the, the whole elements. What did it take for us to get to this place? So Yahweh clearly says that the day you, you partake or you eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will die, die. You will start dying. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. And Yahweh Elohim caused to grow out of, out of the ground every Greek tree pleasing in appearance and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <laughs> Both of those trees were in the middle of the garden. They may have been very close in proximity to each other. 
You may have even been able to look at one and look at the other and see them both. Now, for us, we would say, yeah, but you know what? If I looked at them, I'd know the truth. They looked at them. There's another element that we need to look at. Let's go to Proverbs chapter uh, 3. Let's look at verses 22 through 24. Excuse me. Let's not do that one. Let's do three, 13 through 18. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and who acquires understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and her revenue is better than gold. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left, riches and honor. Her her ways are pleasant, and all her paths peaceful. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her and those who hold on to her. There's the key. Do you get that? Wisdom is the tree of life. And wisdom is tied up with the schwa, hearing and obeying. So for, for, for some reason, there's this aspect in us that we don't want to hear and obey. We, there's, in our minds, we are not connected to this, this thing of wisdom. This puts wisdom with the Shema, hearing and obeying. And I could, you know, we, we, could, we could look at those things. And when I caught that, that these two trees were both in the middle of the garden, I'm thinking, there it is. We can actually, if we're not careful, we can actually, for some reason, go wrong. Even though we have have the truth and the lie standing next to each other. And we do. That's the whole thing. We have the truth and evil or sin standing side by side. Don't we? We can't say that we're away from the truth. It's as close as as scripture. It's as close as a prayer. Look at let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. By the way, there's, uh, if you want to mark these down, there's other uh, scriptures that talk about, uh, uh, like in Revelation 2, 7, it talks, talks about in the King James, the, middle, it's in the, the tree of life is in the middle of paradise, and actually the paradise is translated Eden. Okay, so there's other passages that you can look at uh, with this. Okay, uh, 1 Corinthians ch- chapter 2, uh, verses 15 and 16. It says, the spiritual person, however, can evaluate everything, yet he himself cannot be evaluate, uh, evaluated by anyone. For, for who has the, mind, the, 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 the uh, master's mind that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Messiah. Now, would you say that the mind of Messiah is full of wisdom and is our tree of life? I would. In this passage, 
uh, it, it, it helps us clarify exactly what, what, what we probably already are supposed to have known. That, that we already died. That now we actually have access in, in life through the mind of Messiah. And we also have at our very access wisdom. Wouldn't you say that if you have, if we have the mind of Messiah, we have wisdom with us? Let's, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. If anyone destroys Yahweh's sanctuary, Yahweh, Yahweh will destroy him. For Yahweh's sanctuary is holy, and that is what you are. Holy. In, in the, the, the Holy Spirit is, caused, is called, uh, let me see here. Oh, I was, uh, uh, Second Corinthians, I'm sorry. I'll get to that one. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verses, uh, chapter 3, verse 17. And it says this. Now, now the master is the spirit, and where the spirit of the master is, there is freedom. Do you get that? Listen to me. It says that the master, who, when we talk, when we refer to the master in the New, in the New Testament, who? who? Ah, there it is. Didn't he say that he'd given us his Holy Spirit? He gave us the spirit of the Messiah. Back to Romans. Chapter 6. Verse 2. Absolutely not. Now we who died to sin, uh, absolutely how can we who died to sin still live in it? If we look closer at this verse, it says that we are made alive. That, that apparently makes us dead to sin. So in us being made alive is Messiah who died for our sins so that we can live without sin. Now let's go to, to, to Romans 6, 3. Or are you unaware that all of us who, who were baptized into Messiah Yeshua were baptized into his death? Look at verse 5 really quickly. Um, for if, if we have been joined with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. The word likeness in the Greek is kind of interesting because it, it, put, it says it like this, if we were planted together with him. What is planted together with him in his death? What does that mean? If we were planted together, we were united, but we were planted into where? Into the grave with him. Now, he did say, think about it like this. This is just a picture for you. Did he say that? It says, if you were planted with him. You were planted with him in his death. And because you were planted with him in his death, you were raised with him to live unto Yahweh. How 
How many think this is cool? Let's see a show of hands. Get, get excited. <laughs> Jump up and down. So, not you, Eileen. You stay where you're sitting. You know. <laughs> Jump up and down. Because you know what the truth is? Is that you were made alive. It's time for us to act like we're, we're al- alive in Messiah. And that we're free from de- or sin and death. Verses 4 and 5 says, it says, when you were baptized into Messiah, you were baptized into his death. And not only that, but you were, according to, to verses 4 and 5, were also baptized into his burial and into his resurrection as well. And see as how, listen to me, see as how he no longer is able to die, guess what? We win. Because we live, we live we live. The flesh isn't going to make it, but we do. Paul goes on to, uh, in Romans chapter 6, uh, in verse 6, starting in verse 6, it says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the sin's dominion over the body may be abolished so that, you, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin since a person who, is, who has died is freed from sin's claims. Now, if we, if we died with Messiah, we, all, we believe that we also live with him because we know that Messiah, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For in, in, in light of the fact that he died, he died to sin once and for all. He died for our sins once and for all. Listen, you do not have to take up sin. He, because you were buried with him, he died for us and our sins. He paid for the price to give us life. It means the contract that was over our life that we were supposed to have to serve, the contract that was over our life has been broken. You're no longer a slave to that contract of death. Now, the question comes up, having said all this, is he talking about Baptism in water? No. He's talking about the baptism of the, of the, the Ruach, the, the, the baptizing of the Ruach. That's what took place. And you know what? When we're mikvah or when we're baptized, it should be a joyous time because it's a symbol of us go, uh, coming from the grave to life again to worship him, to live with him in righteousness. Look at verse 11 in Romans 6. So you too consider yourself dead to sin but alive to, to, to Yahweh in Messiah Yeshua. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That word to consider is just in my face. I just don't understand it, okay? Because to me, consider means this. It means consider this or consider that, Okay? Isn't that kind of what it means to you? But if you look at this word to consider carefully, the, the, uh, the dictionary has, has the word, uh, it says to look about carefully. But it's not saying exactly even that either. Uh, be, that's not what's being said here. The word means to consider in a way to look at, or a way to look. So we're, what, what he's actually saying is, I want you to look at things this way. 
We see that in, in first, uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter one. Verse 10. Now I urge you, brothers, in the, sa- in the name of our Master Yeshua Messiah, that all of you agree in what you say, that the, there, it, there, there be no divisions among you, that you be united with the same understanding and the same conviction. Uh oh. There goes that thing where it's okay to, for us to disagree, right? Not according to what that says. He's urging us to think the same way. He's urging us to to do the same things. We are to say the same things We are to be perfectly joined together, and we are to be of the same judgment. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. For who has known the mind, uh, the master's mind, that he may be instructed, he may instruct him? But we have the mind of, of of Messiah. What he's asking us to do is not to come at angle with our own opinions. What he wants us to do is come together in the mind of of Yeshua HaMashiach, HaMashiach, our Messiah. Right? Does does the, the mind of Messiah have different points of view? That would make Messiah... What? Unstable in all of his ways, right? Am I right? So if we look at this, there's something that we're to be doing that would bring us to this this central point in our lives to think the same way. Turn with me to Acts. Chapter 2. Verse 1. It says, When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. And, it, and actually, it says that they were in one accord in the King James. That in one court means to be of the same mind. Listen, to people, they were told to do something. When Yeshua had, had, had ascended, what were they told to do? To go back to, to, into the upper room and to wait there until the, the power on high had come. And it says that when the power on high becomes, you will be my witnesses. That's going to be how you'll know that it's me. That's, you, that's, that's going to be how you know that the power, the, 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 the power from on high came, is that you will become my witnesses. Do you understand that? What happened? They became his witnesses. In fact, 3,000 people heard, heard their, the, 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 the gospel in their own language. Peter sp- stood out or st- stepped out and spoke. 3,000, over 3,000, because there were others there as well. Came to Messiah that day. Here's what I'm saying. Let's turn to to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's 
Let's look at verses uh, 3 through 6. For though we live in the body, we do not wage war in an unspiritual way. Since the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but are powerful through Yahweh for the, de- the, the demolition of strongholds, we demolish uh, arguments and every high-minded thing that is raised up against the knowledge of Yahweh, taking every thought captive to obey Messiah. And we, we, we are ready to punish any, dis, any disobedience once our obedience has been confirmed. Listen, people, what he's saying is that the sin that we have, the problem areas that we have, is, is that we, our thoughts are not conforming to his thoughts. What would happen if we used his thoughts? Bunches of power. What he's saying is that the problems that we're having is that we have strongholds in our thinking that we have to go back. Listen to me carefully. Yahweh has already made judgment on things. He's already spoken what, what the outcome is going to be. If our words to each other, to to ourselves and to each other, are different from what he says the outcome's going to be, then we're not taking our thoughts captive. We're not not taking our thoughts captive to the obedience of Messiah, which is putting us in a place of sin, because when we're not doing that, we're speaking a different truth. Do you get that? Satan is the father of all lies. And all he has to do is to get us to think differently than Yahweh. And off we go. Back to Romans. Chapter 6, look at verse 12. Now we talked about it in verse 11. The word consider actually means to think in this way. Okay? Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies so so that you obey its desires. Do not offer any parts of it to sin as weapons for for unrighteousness, but as those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to Yahweh and all the parts of yourselves to Yahweh as weapons for righteousness. Turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Starting verse 1 says, Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of of Yahweh, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to Yahweh. That is your spiritual worship. Do not conform. Do not be formed. Do not let this world form you to this age. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good and pleasing and perfect will of Yahweh. That's the issue. When we're faced with uh, the tree of good, uh, the knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life, we're supposed to allow our, our minds to be renewed so that we can know what is the pleasing, what is the will of Yahweh. You see, 
when we're thinking with his mind, we'll know exactly what tree we're looking at. What if we, what if we begin to believe what he really says about us? And what if we spoke to each other the things that he really says about us? What would happen? You're speaking truth over someone. You're speaking blessing over someone. You're speaking that which builds up over someone. You know, the worst part is we're just now getting to this. I mean, I myself, I'm thinking, what is this about? Well, here it is. You guys know that I like to joke. But sometimes those jokes don't speak his truth. I want to bless you. I want you guys to to have everything that you could have in Messiah. And so, so I have to watch my tongue. I have to watch what I say so that I can, I can speak over to you the truth that, we, that he says, right? If I ever spoke anything to you, even in, in, what it, in, in jest, that hurts you, I am sorry. And I hope you forgive me. But we have to begin to speak truth over each other. Over ourselves, over our children, over, over our wives, over our husbands. You see, it, it comes down to that. It comes down to what the word, you know, the scripture says that we have the power of life and death in our tongues. What we speak. This is what that means, is that we have to speak truth over each other. We have to speak it Yahweh's way. We have to speak it from Yahweh's perspective, from Yahweh's mind. That's what he's saying here. That's exactly what he's saying here, is that, you know what, we can be caught. Do you realize that? We can have caught. We can be unified. But it's not going to be using our own minds. It's going to be using the mind of Messiah. I think it would be hugely powerful if we came to that point. You know, this, this one, this one was like surgery for me, because I like to joke. I like to say things, you know, that I like to see people laugh. It doesn't say that we can't laugh. It doesn't say that we can't have humor, but it says to choose your words wisely. Choose your words according to the thoughts of Messiah according to the mind of Messiah. I'm done for now. How many of you like my shirt, by the way? That's because my wife dressed me this morning. <laughs> yeah, you think I'm kidding, huh? <laughs> I told Steve that this morning. He says, me too. <laughs> Any questions? Comments?
Okay, then. Oh, there's one. <clears throat> Thank you, Rick. I just love that so much. Um, you know, in some ways, we're a fortunate people because of the world we live in today, but probably more than not, we are so distracted. There are so many distractions, good ones, bad ones, a lot of good ones. And we do need to take the time to be with our Lord, just one-to-one. -one. We have to read his word or we won't have that mind of Christ. We're going to have all the stuff in the back of our heads, and we're going to have to decipher what truth is. When if we just took the time and got in the word and prayed and, and just absorbed him in. I know a lot of times, I've said this before, I, I go to the word and then I'll see these cobwebs that have probably been there, you know, or I'll see this thing or all that book isn't straight or... It's just ridiculous. And I have to literally out loud say, no, stop, and then get into the word and remain in the word until my time's up. Amen. Good work. Anyone else? I have a practical question. Um, I'm not going to use any names, but there's a person who speaks words of death over other people. And I'm, I hear it and I'm going, that's not right. I don't know whether to say something at that point or to just break the curse or exactly how to handle that when they're fairly, we're fairly close friends, but yeah. Well, you know, the truth is, I hate to tell you this, okay? I, I hate to be the one that breaks the news. The world doesn't like us. I know, it was hard for me too. But anyway, <laughs> the world doesn't like us. And you know what? The world is not, they're not going to speak the truth to you. They don't have the truth. But we don't have to receive what they say. Okay? We don't have to receive it. I wouldn't look at their face and go, I don't receive that. But I would, you know, in, in my heart, I would say I'm not receiving that. You know? Huh? Okay. Is this a believer? The, the other thing, too, is um, <laughs> I'm going to be careful here. Uh, you might, if need be, okay, you might not see that whoever's doing that less, you know, um, just until, it, until they, you know, until they can actually uh, kind of clean up what they're doing. Now, remember, they, they can't they don't have the same thing we have as far as if they're, if they're not saved. They don't have the same access that we have, okay? They're just never going to have until they come to Messiah. So, um, but it's somebody who is saved, so that's... Okay, well, but you might point some of this out. Okay. Um, I used to be with two friends. We'd be waiting for our kids at a program they were doing. And... We were just, you know, bonding and sharing and connecting, and then it just always ended up in gossip. And the one friend would just take the conversation in a totally different direction. It was abrupt, it was a little awkward, but she, by just taking the, it in a different direction, she stopped the gossip. And, and I was sitting there like, how do I stop this? I would dread the conversation. It just always ended up down there. And then it was on my heart that I needed to pray with her out loud. We needed to pray out loud. And it, that took a while to work up to, but we did. We all prayed together out loud. And the woman went home, and she, she went. So she tells me the next week, my son has been dealing with a bully at school. And because you prayed with me, I went home, prayed with my son. And the next day, he went to school. He came back, and he, uh, you know, it was, he, he began praying for the bully. And the, that was amended, and she was able to pray with her daughter for some healing. So sometimes just being brave enough to take the conversation in a different direction starts this whole tidal wave of other things happening. So you can speak truth when someone is speaking, you know, death. You can just speak life, even if it's awkward. Yeah, and I, I've, I've actually reminded people that, um, that that's gossip. I, I don't want to receive that. That's, that. I don't want to participate, you know, in gossip. So... Um, that's one of the things that, that I've learned is, is that I just tell them. But then, you know, I'm kind of this A-type personality, and I probably should tone some of that down too. So, get up. This is actually, I was talking to my son today about getting ready for uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread and um, how removing, 
you know, the leaven is puffed up, it's sin and it's a representation. And how we need to think about what sin we have. And I actually mentioned gossip. It's one of the things I do struggle with. And um, I'm much better. My husband, is, when he came into my life, I remember one day I was complaining about the same thing I always complain about and gossip about. And he looked at me and he told me I was gossiping. And I was so upset with him. And I remember I went, to the, I went into another room and I'm sitting there and I'm just fuming like, oh, who does he think he is? And then all of a sudden it was like he was right. And then I was like, oh, goodness. And so I told him he was right. And so not saying you should necessarily do that, but what I find myself doing when I catch myself doing it um, is I, I will sometimes, I will have to remove myself. So if you're somebody who also isn't just trying to not be around gossipers but has a problem with gossiping, what I do is I will walk away. I just turn around and I walk away. And sometimes it's the only thing I can do because I just want to keep going and going and going, you know? I'm a talker, so. So, and then just, you know, praying in the morning and trying to read scripture will help sometimes too. Do that random flip, you know? And then point and read normally helps. <laughs> Anyone else? I was going to say, I've dealt with a couple people that do that, and uh, I learned, I just, I just, for every negative they say, I come up with a positive, that I put it, I'll repeat it, pretty soon, they notice it, they notice, I just say, that person does, uh, prays well, that person cares, that, and if you do that around that person, pretty soon they either won't, they won't talk that way around you anymore. Uh, it, it's a kind way to put them to shame. That try, just try to say something good every time, every negative. And, and there's sometimes there's so many negatives, it's hard to come up with the good <laughs> list as big as what they can throw at you because they're practiced at it. <laughs> but, but that's what I do. That's what I do. I don't rebuke them. I don't tell them they're doing wrong or anything else. I just say a kind word. And they get it. They, they get it after a while. At first, it might go over their head. But. The, in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, you guys heard me talk about this. Um, I, I love it. It says, His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. By these he has given, given us his, very, his great and precious promises so that we, through them, uh, you, may, you may share in the divine nature escaping the corruption of the world uh, in this world because of evil desires. What we've talked about today is exactly the fulfillment of that. That's how that happens. Okay, because as, we, as we, our life becomes into agreement with what Yahweh has already judged us, uh, judged to be, then it empowers us and it empowers the, the divine nature of the Holy Spirit to, uh, to, to cause us to live um, and, and not give in to the evil desires of this world. Hi. Um, I can kind of relate to what Darren was saying about... Uh, um, wanting to to die basically because when I first came here I had all been given up I would lost um, my very best friend in the whole world, my mom and I made a financial error and lost everything there but coming to this church and feeling all the love from, from, from the congregation and you uh, and some of my friends that had brought me here um, I, uh, I've just changed my attitude. I'm getting a little more social with people. And I can very much relate to, to how these people were talking because I felt that way. But now I feel the Spirit of the Lord. He's never left my side. He's always been there. And I, and I feel that now. And before, I did not. When I was younger, about 20 years old, I did, but I, I kind of put that on the back burner because my life was not good at that time. 
and uh, I ask the Lord to forgive all my sins. And I know he died on the cross for all of us and for myself. And I'm going to try to live for the Lord. And I'm not uh, having anxiety anymore. I quit taking the medication. And with the support of all my friends that I've met here in this congregation, I bless all of you for helping me spiritually. And, and I have a lot to learn. You know, I know little bits and pieces, but I want to put it all together and learn God's truth and try to live by that until one day I do see my maker. Bless you all. Thank you very much for helping me spiritually and emotionally. God bless you, all of you. Thank you. You too. I, I, I want to confess something, though. Well, how I came up with that but why, by saying a good thing is because I learned to do that with myself. When I have a negative thought about anybody, even if it's, it's it, a negative, they, it's an actual negative that, that I have, I go down, I start praying for them and blessing them and thanking Yahweh for every good thing I can think of about that person. And that chases that spirit away. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone else? How about some announcements? Hey, you even got, I can't believe you got applause over announcements. I, gotta, yeah. Yeah. I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> Maybe that's the, why they're applauding. Okay. Uh, we have a card in the back that's for Terry, and we invite everybody to sign it. Show it. There you go. Can everybody see that card right there? We would like to get that into Terry's hands. So if you get a chance to sign it, and put a nice little sweet something on there. I think you'd really appreciate that. This is gonna be from the Cornerstone family. Isn't that awesome? Okay, let's see. We still have prayer at five o'clock on Thursdays here at the assembly. And the men's Bible studies at Steve House is at 6.30. How many are, are delighted to see Eileen? Isn't that great? Has everybody seen her Hot Wheels that she rides in right there? Now, I, I have to admit, it, my mind went a mile a minute, excuse the pun there. I'm thinking, boy, if I was Steve and my wife was in this wheelchair, I would have more fun than you can imagine. <laughs> Does the idea of a wheelchair race kind of cross your mind? <laughs> Popping wheelies in the grocery store. And I asked Eileen, do you trust Steve? She says, well, most of the time. <laughs> so anyway, we're so glad to see you. And thank you so much for being with us today. Okay, uh, just quickly... Um, uh, apparently, we have a new Facebook page for those who want to uh, explain that a little bit, Rick, if you will. Okay, the, the, um, this is the other thing that happens, okay? My wife goes to a women's Bible study, and I get information as she comes out of the Bible study. And the latest information was about how can we, you know, sell things or get... get uh, or trade things, or do whatever. Um, can we put a bulleted board up? And, and I was thinking, bulleted board is probably not real good because who's gonna update it and all that stuff. So what I did was I, I made a Facebook page that's called Cornerstone Marketplace. And you can actually take pictures of whatever you wanna trade or sell or, or whatever, and you can post it all there so, uh, with your contact information and, they, and people can t contact you and, uh, for whatever, okay, so that you can the Do Cornerstone that. Black Market is so it's called, on the web. Well, that's not exactly how I put it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, also, uh, just a, a quick reminder about Oneg. Uh, 
I, I don't know how many crock pots we have out there, but be sure and take just enough to take care of what you need because there's going to be a group of people behind you. So if you use a little bit of uh, judgment on that, we appreciate that. So the next thing I'm going to do, because we do have Passover coming up, how many are kind of getting excited about Passover? How many of you are starting to prepare for Passover? How many have no idea what's going to happen at Passover? We want to help you with that. So while I'm getting the little table, I'm going to turn this over to my wife, who's got some training that she's been doing and some more information to help out. Turn it around. There. All right. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Everybody have this week's paper? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the previous weeks, this is our third week to talk about preparing for Passover. And if you have not been here for the last couple of weeks and you don't have last week's paper or the paper before, um, Dale and I will be right back here at the end of the service and we will be happy to share those copies with you, okay? This week's paper focuses on Yeshua and his direction to the disciples. And he told them to go to a specific place and to prepare the Passover. So we're taking our tip from him and... Uh, preparing as he, as he also had his disciples prepare. Amen? So Yahweh has given us all of the information that we need in the scriptures, and the papers um, to date have uh, outlined those various uh, elements that you will need. And this week, you have there's a checklist, just trying to be as helpful as we can, because some of the people in our congregation have never put their own, have never celebrated Passover in their own home, and just trying to be as helpful as we possibly can to help people out with that, okay? So, Dale and I will be in the back. If you have questions, um, we'd be more than happy to help you out. We'll also have some boxes of matzah. If you haven't purchased any matzah before, some unleavened bread, we'll have some boxes of that to show you. And I just wanted to ask, does anybody have any questions that you think are like a really big question that you think all the other people would have too? You want to just go ahead and take an extra minute and see if anybody has a question today? It's a good sign. All right. Oh, yes, D, go ahead. What? Oh, yes. I got it. Okay. She wanted to know about those who don't have a place. I ran all the way back. <laughs> all right. I want to know about those people that do not have a place Perfect. to yeah. spend Passover. We have, we have a plan for that. Anybody else? <clears throat> So Dee asked about those who don't have a place. So as we started from the very beginning, um, some people have a home that they could use to invite others over, but they need help in maybe hosting. They don't want to do it all themselves. Other people don't have a place where it would be uh, convenient um, or conducive to invite others. And so what we've been advocating is that people would just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to show them what they should do. And so we're hoping that those of you that do have a place at your, at your table for one or two people could invite others to come, okay? And that's one of the things that Dale and I want to hear about at our little booth today at the back. Okay. If you don't have a place to go and you would like to let us know, then we will make note of that and do our very best to make some of those connections maybe that haven't been made yet. Steve? Dee, would you like to come to our house for oh. Passover? <laughs> It's that, thank you, Steve, it's that simple. It's that simple, okay? How many of you ha know that you have one or two places you could easily fit somebody else in at your, at your house? Anybody like that? Dee's got a few? 
Yeah. Yes. We can fit a couple more. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if uh, again, if there's anybody that ha knows they have room, um, that'd be something else that we would just love to. Because if we get more requests like that, what Dee just said, then we'd know. Hey, we can put them together. Um, this D, she just learned that David is going to be away. So she needs to put a party together, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk in the back. Anybody who doesn't have a place to go, we'll talk in the back. All right, well, may Yahweh bless all of your preparations. All right, um, let's see here. Boy, I gotta watch where I'm walking. This makes a person nervous. Okay, uh, any testimonies anybody wanna share real quick before we conclude? Anything exciting happen that you'd like to share with the group? So this is a very boring spring break, right? I know that uh, Yeshua is interested even in small things because uh, uh, the other day I was going on the way home and my door on my car, the latch thing on it broke so it doesn't hold the door open so it just swings back shut on you. And so I just thought I'd stop it, uh, uh, pick it apart on the way home. Went out there and uh, didn't have any tools with me. Got out there to look for this latch and here I found one. And it worked, but I didn't have any tools. Here I heard a guy working on a car about four cars over from me. He supplied me with tools. I got the piece off, perfect thing, and I just thought, I just thanked the Lord because that thing was worth about 70 bucks. And he says, how about five bucks? So I thought that was great. <laughs> wow. If you ever need any car parts, take Don with you shopping, all right? My wife and I uh, got a car a year ago, and uh, it had a bad fuel pump on it, uh, as well as a window that wanted to fall down. We got that fixed, but it lasted us for a whole year before it completely went out, and we're thankful it went out in the driveway. And, and it's a $200 fuel pump, so we're doing good now, and we'll be able to come more often. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Even the little things were important. I just want to say Anybody else? <laughs> My turn. <laughs> okay. I just, um, Thank you so much. Oh, did we have some back here? There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know I've already talked once, but um, I, I feel like I've got a second chance at life now because I, I just seen my doctor, and he says definitely my cancer is in remission, and I am cancer free at this point, but I just have to go through a few radiation treatments and. I've got to keep a lot of hair, <laughs> and uh, I just want to thank everybody for the prayers, oh, yeah. and uh, um, especially Dee and Linda, two, two good friends. Um, I've known Linda for over 30 years, and, and she brought me to this place, and I know the good Lord has, has cured me, and I worship him, and I just want to thank everybody for the prayers. I just... I got a second chance, and it's, and it's because of the Lord. He scared me. And amen. We will not cease praying either. And I will still. We're going to finish the victory. Here. Finish what all. the Heavenly Father started. Anybody else quickly? Mr. Rick. Many of you would like to be blessed. Yes. Yeah. Just stand. And Yahweh spoke to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons how you are to bless Israelites. Say to them, may Yahweh bless you and protect you. May Yahweh make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh look with favor on you and give you shalom. In this way, they will pronounce my name over the Israelites, and I will bless them. 
Yivarachacha Yahweh Vahishmarecha Yahweh Yahweh Panavelecha Vichunecha Yes, Bring us back to you, Yahweh, and we shall return. Renew our days, renew our days as of old. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.